welcome to Freeway Moments. In this episode we're going to be looking at the Freeway 5 Express interface. This is the main freeway window. Let's have a look around and see what the various parts of it do. This area up here is the toolbar and you use these to build your website. To the left here we have the site pane and this is what you use to control the structure of your site. This area here handles hyperlinks and we'll have a quick look at this in a little while. And this is the main design area of Freeway. The back and forward buttons work in a similar way to those in a browser. They let you move between pages you have previously worked on. The select tool lets you manipulate objects on a page. You can select items, resize them, and move them around. Freeway has a zoom tool. This lets you get up really close to the object you're working on. When you're up that close you can obviously move things around with a very high degree of precision. This lets you position things with a very high level of accuracy. Let's just get us back to how we were before. There we are. The HTML tool lets you draw HTML objects on the page and usually you'd put text in these. You can also put QuickTime movies, Flash and other kinds of plug-in content. HTML objects can be repositioned and resized at any time. As well as HTML boxes we can also draw tables as well as form elements with this tool. The action tool lets us add more dynamic content to the website. We'll be looking at some of these in future moments. The graphic tool lets us add images to our website. We've got a number of options for this kind of shape we can draw. We can sketch one on the page and much like the HTML item we can add text in there if we want. We can also import images such as JPEGs and PNG files. I can also draw an oval if I don't want hard edges or a corner on my image. The map area tool lets us define an area of an image as a link. So if we want this button to be a link but not the rest of the image I can just sketch out a map area there and apply the link to it. The rotate tool lets you rotate graphic items. You do this just by grabbing a corner and spinning it around the centre. Because of the limitations of HTML you can only rotate graphic items. The flow tool lets you flow text between boxes in much the same way as you would in a regular desktop publishing program. To the left of the window we have the site pane. In the site pane we have a list of all the master pages which the site is using and below that we have the actual site folder itself which shows all the pages that make up the website. We can move between pages by clicking on the icons of the pages next to the name. At the bottom of a window we have a control which lets us delete pages and another control which lets us add pages, master pages and folders. If I click on the title bar at the top of the site pane I'll get a breakdown of all the elements on the page. I can also see the hierarchy of these items. So this picture for example is a child of another item called photo caption. And this really helps you see where objects are in relation to each other on the page. We're now going to look and see what these buttons underneath the toolbar do. The master page button will show you the master page which the page you're working on is based on. Master pages are identified by yellow rulers. The page button takes you to the current page you're working on. The preview button will show you a WebKit preview of the page. This is exactly the same as viewing the page in Safari. You will have noticed that the toolbar has changed. You can use these tools to perform various accessibility tests on your website. The text size buttons let you increase and decrease the size of the HTML text on the page. Some people's browsers are set to display text at a much larger size. The refresh button does the same job as it does in a browser. It just reloads images if they're cached. The images button lets you switch images off so you can see what the web page looks like to somebody whose browser doesn't display pictures. The JavaScript button lets you switch JavaScript off. 
Some functionality on your page may require JavaScript and not everybody has JavaScript available on their browser and this just lets you check to make sure the site behaves nicely with JavaScript disabled. If you click on the inspector button the inspector palette opens up. The inspector palette is a small window which shows you a lot more information about the item you're working on. The inspector palette will show you the title of the page, the file name as well as other information such as the width and the height. The other tab in the inspector palette lets you change the colour and put background textures and control the positioning of the page. The inspector palette is context sensitive. If I select an image then I now get all the options available to me to control how the image is output. I now have options to control the appearance of the image, for example shadows and beveling and borders, as well as the file format the image is output in, such as JPEG or a GIF or a PNG. Let's have a look at the part of the window which handles hyperlinks. If we select some text with a link applied to it, you'll notice that this area gets populated. In the drop down area, we can choose a page in the site to apply a link to that selected area of text. Or if we click on this globe icon, we get the hyperlink dialog window which opens up. You can also drag a page from the site pane onto that area to set a link up too. And that's a quick tour of the freeway interface. We've had a look at the toolbar and the site pane, site pane controls, the area which handles links and the inspector palette. And that's it for freeway moments for the time being. There'll be another one along shortly, so until then, goodbye.